Wow. Wow. So Merry, Merry Christmas. Um, I love the Christmas season, especially the weather at the moment. It's more like spring, right? But if you're going to the mountains, so much snow, actually, I tell you, amazing. But here down in Zurich, we have um, a beautiful Christmas season. I have the privilege uh, once a year, Christmas season, to preach with my awesome family. That is uh, my two boys, Simon and Stephen. They're 20 and 18 years old. They behave like 20 and 18 years old boys. They're doing awesome, actually. And then it's my wife, Susanna. We, she's with me for decades. Yeah, really. And I'm really blessed to uh, share the message this afternoon with you guys. And, um, you know, I'm really excited about God. There are many, many reasons why I'm super excited. But one thing, I love the way how God has encountered me. The encounter with God is always a very unique way, right? And I love the way how God speaks to me because you have a speaking God. And I love the way how God works miracles in my life. I love that because I need miracles. But here comes the word, the but, you know the but? The but is often the way how God encounters me, the way God speaks to me, and the God, how he works miracles is often differently than I would love that God intervenes, right? Is there anyone in this room you can relate? But, but, then comes another but, 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 but God encounters me. God speaks to me and God still works miracles in me. And let's give a miracle working God a big shout of applause this afternoon. Come on. Because it's very important. Because in the Christmas season, just think for a moment the way how God encountered Mary and Joseph and all the shepherds and, and the wise men was so different. But God approached them, God encountered them, God spoke with them, and God worked miracles after miracles in their personal life. And I want to go a little bit back in the Old Testament to understand there's a pattern from the Old to the New Testament, how the way God encounters, speaks, and works miracles. I want to go back to the prophet of Elijah. You see, oh my God, what has Elijah to do with Christmas? More than you think or imagine. Because he was in a tough season in his life, and he had a desire that God encounters him. He had a desire that God speaks and God works miracles. And then God was saying to him three things. I want to read it in First King chapter 19, verse 11 to 13, an amazing Bible verse. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart, the shadow, the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. But after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Now listen. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. Have you ever wondered why God is whispering? Because when I have some questions, I don't want to have a whispering God. I want to have a God who is clear, specific, loud, encounter. I can hear. God does miracles. But whisper means I don't get it. I don't understand. Why is there a whispering God? Here is the reason why. Leo, do you love me? Yes, of course. Okay. It's like an earthquake, right? <laughs> Loud and clear. Leo, I have another question. Uh, what I'm supposed to go, where I'm supposed to go, left side or right side? Thanks for asking me. This is super easy. You always go right. Oh, okay, Sounds right. Sounds like a wind, right? And I have more questions. What do you like to eat for dinner tonight? Spicy curry chicken, spicy, spicy, spicy. Wow. Okay. You know what? This is like an earthquake. This is like a wind. This is like fire. That means super cloud, clear, boom. Yeah, super loud and clear. I could understand it. That's right. Do you like it? Um, yeah, I mean, at least it was clear and understandable. Why is God whispering? Yeah, why? Leo, do you love me? A whispering God 
will say, whispering, check this out, has to do with a distance. God comes close to you. Before God speaks, you can feel the breath or the breath of God. And then God will whisper, yes, I love you. Wow. He will say, yes, I love you. God, God, come. Oh, you understand? Yes. And uh, Leo, what I'm supposed to go, left side or right side? Whispering God means come close. You can, whoo, the breath of God, and God will say, go to the right side. Wow, wow. makes sense. <laughs> and um, what do you like to eat for dinner tonight? Whispering God comes very close. You can feel whew, the breath of God. And God will say, spicy curry chicken, spicy, 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 spicy. Like spicy, Indian spicy. You know, not American spicy, Indian spicy, spicy. Okay. And you are able to sweat like Indian spicy chicken. <sighs> you understand why God whispers? And when God whispers means God comes closer than you think. You can feel the breath of God. And God whispers in your right ear. And you can feel, sense, and know what God has on his heart. You don't need a God in the fire, in the earthquake, or in the wind. Whispering God is close. You can feel and you can able to hear. Here is the story. Jahrhunderte nach Elia hat das Volk Gottes still gelitten. Sie warteten auf eine Schrift, einen Propheten, ein Wunder. Wie Elia fühlten sie sich von Gott verlassen, der sie einst wählte. Sie sehnten sich nach Rettung. Sie sehnten sich nach dem Messias, der mehr als nur ein altes Versprechen war. Manche erwarteten einen Krieger. Aber der Messias kam nicht mit Schwert und Schild. Manche erwarteten einen König. Aber der Messias kam nicht mit Krone. Zepter. Manche erwarteten einen Helden. Aber Gott sandte keinen Helden, der den Vorstellungen entsprach. In einer kleinen Stadt In der Stille der Nacht nahm das Versprechen Gottes menschliche Gestalt an. Er kam nicht als ein Krieger, ein König oder ein Held. Der 
Retter der Welt kam? Gottes Gegenwart kam sanft und klein, wie ein Flüstern. Does God whisper? Because there's a moment and God is super close. You can feel God's presence and you're able to hear Him. Same question why the strong, almighty God came down, stepped down from heaven, came on earth as a child. As a child is so fragile, right? So sensitive, so weak. But if you hold a child in your arm, it's so close. You can sense the breath, the breathe, everything. And in the whisper, there is always God's voice. And my question is, when God does whisper, what is the language? I mean, I speak Swiss German. Does God speak Swiss German? That would be a smart idea. Or if you're German, speaks God German? Or if you're from America, does speaks God English? Or does God speaks Godlish? I don't know, God has a very unique way to speak to us human beings in a way we are able to understand Him, feel, and we can touch Him. God was not born on our earth. He is somewhere in the supernatural dimension. And we people, we are limited by time and space. Uh, let's call it our earthly dimensions. And I think that's the problem that God has to find a way to talk to us so that we are able to understand him because he lives or exists in a whole other dimension. Let's see what this means in an example with an anthill. You might be in a forest and see an anthill and the problem is that behind the anthill there comes a tractor straight at the hill trying or not trying or he is going to destroy the hill and you know you have now the task to warn all the ants that the threat is incoming. Here you have the small, or let's make it small, the small little ants you have to warn. And I can stand here as a human and talk to them and say, run, run for your life. But I don't think the ant will understand what I was trying to say. Because they don't speak, they don't communicate with words or sound waves. They communicate with sense, with different kind of sense. And if I talk to them, it doesn't really make sense. So what I need, that they understand me, I need to have those antennas, I need the ability to produce sense, and that means I have to become an ant myself. And not just an ant, but an ant who talks to them at eye level. And if I do that, they might be able to understand me. I come to them and say, hey, I'm Simon from the human world. I know it sounds crazy, but you really have to pay attention to what I want to say. A tractor is heading straight at you. I don't know how to explain a tractor with sense to ants, but I use some parables, some things, images they can comprehend. And I think that's the way how God tries to talk with us. He tries to use images, ways we know we can understand and parables in the Bible that we know what's, happen, what's happening in the supernatural world. And that's why Jesus Christ came or was born on Christmas as a fragile, small, little baby. It's God's way to communicate with us human beings. So if God speaks, the question is, how does God speak? He uses many different things. For example, he speaks through nature to us. And in Job 33 verse 14, there he says, For God speaks again and again, though people don't recognize it. And for me, the nature is a great entrance how I can understand God. 
I remember just one year ago at Christmas time, Leo was inspired from the story of Mary and Joseph. They walked from Nazareth to Bethlehem and it was about 170 kilometers. And he was inspired to do the same because we have never done 170 kilometers, kilometers in a row by ourselves. So he came up with the idea, why don't we go for St. James Way from Camina to Santiago de Compostela? Stella and do the 170 kilometers ourselves. So in October, it was time. And I have heard before a lot of that St. James way that people experience God extraordinarily. So that's why my heart and myself was full of expectation to experience God. We did St. James Way in eight days and made 202 kilo kilometers. That was amazing. But all I could experience was the fire in my bones of pain because my leg were full of pain, my feet were full of pain. I could feel the earthquake because, you know, after one day on the, on the map, we were just that far. We went that far. Walking is so slow. And this was my earthquake of doubt. Will we ever reach the goal? Will we ever made it? And then, of course, the storm, the, the heavy wind in my soul that was questioning if we would ever experience God. But after some days, everything was quieting down. I got at ease. And this was a God experience in itself. But that was not all. Uh, keeping down with the pace we were in, that was a great experience. And at the end, about the sixth day, it was as if God was speaking to me and saying, you know, it's not about reaching a goal as fast as possible. It's not about doing your to-dos as fast as possible. It's about walking step by step. It's about calming down as much as possible, on and on, again and again. This was my God encounter at St. James Way. And ever since, I do my one hour walk every day or maybe two hours to just create space, to just create room so God can come close so I can understand his whisper again and again in ways he's about to choose. Pretty cool. Wow. Mrs. Susanna said, if you want to hear God, we have to create space and room. This is very important because we are so busy in life. Uh, Elijah has to step out of the cave because God was not speaking with him in the cave. Mary and John had to walk 170 kilometers. That means while you're walking, you have time to think, to reflect. And I think the way, the reason often people ask me, why, why I'm not able to hear God more and stronger and often? My question is always, do you create space? Is there an atmosphere where you have an encounter where God can step in and sit down and speak with you? Another way that how God speaks to you is through conscience. I think when we're reading the Bible early in the morning or we're praying with God, it means I create a space, a momentum, where I just sit down and reflect my soul, my spirit with God and give God a chance really to speak with me, to, to whisper actually to me. Some uh, weeks ago, I had a very busy week actually, a year actually, because 20 years ago God gave me a prophetic word. One day I will travel around the world and I will preach all over the world. This was 20 years ago. This year I preached in six continents around the world. Only one continent is missing, is the Antarctic. I will not go there because it's too cold and there are any or no people. But I preached all over the world and the prophecy came to uh, fulfillment and I, I could see it. But over the last couple of months, sometimes I felt a little bit weak and, and also sick. Not, not really sick, but also not healthy. Just like in the middle. Have you ever known that? Just, just not doing so strong. And in my quiet time, I, I asked God, tell me why I'm not fit. And I heard like a whispering voice. Sabbath. Rest. Have you ever heard about the Sabbath? You should rest with God. The day off where you do nothing. 
said to God, ah, that's a good idea. I heard, I know a lot of people for them. It's very important. They, yes, I teach to them. They should take the Sabbath. Because no, no, not about them. It's about you. And then only an hour later, I read in the newspaper a very funny article. Uh, in, 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 in Lux, they want to create, build a luxus hotel for 250 million for top managers to slow down. <laughs> While I was reading the Bible, take the Sabbath, and I read that, I thought, this is ridiculous. 250 million, God has given us the law of Sabbath, rest one day, and you will be strong and healthy, and you can do more than you ever can think or imagine. This was, was just the moment God spoke to me, and for me, the whispering voice of God means for me for the next year, take the Sabbath, rest more, encounter God more, create a space and an atmosphere where God can step in and we have an encounter. Then comes the question, how does God speak to us? What is the way that God speaks to us? And Simon, Stephen, Stephen, yeah, Stephen, sometimes Simon, Stephen, 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 you're Stephen. Yeah, yeah Stephen. Yeah, yeah, Don't yeah. change your name. <laughs> how can we hear God's voice? And I think with God, it's like with a friend. If you don't spend time with him, then you can't have an encounter with him. And if we want to hear God's voice, it means that we have a focus on him. And a focus means that we create space and time where God can come near to us and speak to us in a whispering voice. And I decided a few years ago that I, wanted, that I want to read the Bible every day. And for that, I started a one-year Bible reading plan. And that meant that every day you had to re read about um, 30 minutes. And I thought that God would speak to me in a, in a big moment where he comes to me and where I un will understand what he's really about. But after this one year and during this year, I never felt the one moment where God spoke to me. And I thought, well, it's just, it could be that I have to read into the Bible and it takes time until he speaks. And so I started a second year and this time I tried to listen to the whole Bible because I was tired of reading every day about 30 minutes. And so in the second year I started to realize that God was the whole time not speaking this one moment to me, but that I was laying a foundation of my faith. And that in this moment was much more strong than this one big moment that I wanted. And with that motivation, I started about one month ago, my third plan, my third reading plan. And this time I added the daily chapter in a different translation so that I have always the Bible that I read, but always from a different perspective. And the point is God didn't encounter me as I wanted him or as I expected him to do. But, and here's the but, he encountered me. And as he encountered me, he also will encounter you. And the same, the same problem, the people back then when Jesus came on earth, they had the same problem. They had their expe expectations how God, how Jesus will come on earth. But in the end, he came in a very different way than they would expect. But the fact is, he always encountered everybody. And as he encountered them back then, he also encounters you today in your own life, in your situation where you are right now. Come on. Jesus kam nicht auf die Art und Weise, wie wir es erwarteten. Er wurde in arme Verhältnisse geboren. Sohn eines himmlischen Vaters, geboren durch eine irdische Mutter und Jungfrau. Er sieht dich. Thank you. 
Er erwählt dich. Er kennt deine Geschichte und deinen Namen. Egal, was du getan hast, seine Liebe für dich bleibt immer gleich. Vielleicht ist dir Gott nicht wie erwartet begegnet. Aber jetzt, in diesem Augenblick, hörst du. Er flüstert dir zu. Flüstern mitten im Chaos. I love the fact that we have a whispering God actually. And I often teach about that Bible verse actually, but I never saw it from that perspective. Then when God is whispering, that means God comes close to me. I can sense the breath of God. And I can hear his amazing voice. But God said to Eliza, step out from the cave. God said to Mary and John, step out, leave your village. And while they were walking and going, all of a sudden they could see the miracles in their lives. And I want to ask you in the next song, just think a moment for your own life, for your own journey. Maybe God calls you, challenges you, to step out from a certain situation so that you're able to understand or hear Him. Or maybe along your journey, you feel far away from God. God is saying to you, in front of you, very close, there is the miracle will take place. And while the band is performing an amazing song, a Christmas song, just think for a moment, how is God able to whisper, to come close to you? Story of amazing 
to dance and sing like to this girl. I'm happy that they do it. Absolutely. And I would love to pray with you. And this chair symbols actually God and my own journey. And I think if you want to have an encounter with God or feel God close or we can sense the whispering voice of God, I think it's important that I'm not sitting alone on this chair I'm inviting God Inviting God means I create space. I not feel a chair for myself anymore. And maybe here for the very first time, or maybe here you have came so often and, and you not feel close to God anymore, or maybe you did certain things in your life, or you have never uh, surrendered your whole entire life to Christ. And I think that could be a very cool evening because when I was 18 years old on the 1st of January, I will never forget that I was 18 years old. I surrendered my whole entire life to God, that Jesus come in my life, be a part, and I felt like Jesus coming close to me. And since then, ever then, I have a close relationship with Jesus and I just would love to pray with you can we close our eyes for a moment and closing just means prayer is something between you and your God and I don't want to be distracted and if you're here you want to receive Jesus Christ for the very first time or, or you want to make a recommitment I will pray one sentence and then I give you a chance wherever you sit to just repeat that sentence in your heart and with this prayer, you commit and you surrender your life to Christ. And please pray with me and say, Dear Jesus, thank you for my unique life. I have failed. Please forgive me all my sins and failures. I receive your forgiveness. I make you as my Lord and Savior. Please lead me and guide me. Bless me and protect me. I want to be yours forever. And the Bible says when we pray this prayer, your sins are forgiven, you belonging to the family of God. God is saying, welcome home. And God is writing your name in the, in, in the book of life. That means your name remains there forever. Welcome home into the kingdom of God. 
And now we would love to pray for the whole entire church. I think everyone has maybe a situation where you need an encounter. Maybe you feel far away from God or maybe you heard the whispering voice of God. But what you heard is maybe not what you expected to hear. But God knows what he's doing and God is an amazing God. Yes, and Lord Jesus, I thank you so much that you speak. Yes. That you speak again and again. And we are here and maybe you realize you didn't recognize it. It was too normal, too much everyday life and you didn't recognize it as the voice of God. It doesn't matter until you recognize it now today. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are not mad at us, that you are not um, unpatient, that you just remind ourselves yes. again and again that you are here and we can hear your voice. And whatever you sense that you are reminded of something that seemed to be yourself, your idea, or just too normal, that just not godly enough would you hear, it. why don't you take it right now and say, I trust you, Lord, that this was you speaking, and I will just do it, even though it seems too normal, making no sense, making no difference, but I trust you. Please help me to do the next step. Church, on almost every Sunday, while we're praying to God, I always, almost every Sunday I give the church and you just that moment, I believe God has said, if we ask God, He will add unto us. And we are a church who asking God for miracles. We ask God for provision miracle. We ask God maybe for a forgiveness miracle. Whatever miracles you need right now. And while your eyes are closed, I just want to encourage you right now. In the next minute, just ask God clearly and specific for a miracle. We have a miracle working God on our side. A God who hears, a God sees, and a God who intervenes. your life in the mighty name of the Father God who is in power in charge of everything and I bless you in the love of Jesus Christ he died on my behalf and I bless you in the power of the Holy Spirit we never walk alone then the power of God is leading is guiding is empowering equipping our journey and I know if God is for me who can ever be against me nothing because i'm surrounded protected empowered by god almighty and we say together amen you know what our next generation should be more educated than us each day should be more equipped than us more empowered than us they should be smarter they should have bigger dreams See further, go further. That's normal. That's how it should be. Every one of us will ultimately leave what we live. Not just what we do, but the spirit in which we live. Have you ever thought in your own life, somebody should do something? The somebody, usually it's you.